Hi guys, it's Eleanor and today we're going to generate a very simple map which is randomly generated every time you start your game. It's going to look something like this at the end. And I have put together these tiles, they're all the same, I've just tinted them differently just for this project. We're going to start by importing them into Unity and then set each one of them to Sprite 2D. And the next thing we have to do is set the pixels per unit to 600, which is the size of my tiles. But you should put the size of the tiles that you're using here. So now if we drag the tile to the editor, we can see that it exactly matches the units in the editor. And I'm rotating the tiles by 90 degrees to make sure they're facing the right direction in relation to the scene. So let's create an empty object, name that blue tile, and I'll add the blue tile sprite as a child of this. Then I'm gonna set the X rotation to 90, and I'm gonna shift this by half a unit on the X and the Z to align with the Unity guidelines. Now let's create a prefabs folder and make a prefab out of the blue tile. And let's go ahead and do the same for the pink, purple and green ones. Now let's delete these prefabs from the scene and we need to create two empty objects. One named container, which will hold all of our tiles and one called manager, to which we will attach the script that will be creating the map. Let's add the new script to the manager and call it tile generator. And let's open that up. So first we need two variables, a game object array called tile prefabs, so we can have a reference of all the tile prefabs we have just made. And another one, game object container, which will be the reference to the object we want the tiles to be contained in. And if we go back to Unity, we can set those up. We have four tile prefabs, so let's drag those in. And let's also drag the container object to the container slot. Next, let's set two more variables, one for the number of columns and one for the number of rows. And in the editor, I'll send both of these to 10. Right, we have everything set up. Now we can move on to actually generating the map. The basic idea is that we're going to create some number of random tiles at a random location and of a random color. Once we have created those, we will loop through every single position on the map see which one of the original random tiles is the closest and we'll use that color. So we're going to end up with something like little islands of the same color. So basically we get groups of tiles that are the same, somewhat similar to the maps in Don't Starve. So to start, let's add a variable so that we can control the number of random tiles created at the start. I'm calling this number of seeds. Let's remove the update function, we won't be needing this, and create a function called create random points. Here let's loop from 0 to the number of seeds, and in the loop for each one we will pick a random point. Vector3 random point equals new vector3, and for the x value we will do random down range between 0 and the number of rows then zero for the y and random dot range between zero and the columns for the z. Let's add a new list of vectors named seeds to keep track of all of our original tiles. And down here, we will add this random point to it. Next, we have to pick a random prefab. 
int random tail number and set that to a random number between 0 and the number of prefabs we have referenced earlier. Let's also add another list to keep track of the color of the random tiles, a list of ints named tile prefab index. And again, let's add the random index to the list on here. Now we know where the tile should go and what color it should be, so let's just instantiate it. Game object tile equals instantiate, and then we want to give it the prefab tile prefabs random tile number as an index, and then the random position, and then quaternion.identity for rotation. Let's set the parent object to the container and we're done with this part. Tile.transform.parent equals container.transform. Let's call this function in the star function. And now we can go to the editor and see how it's coming together. Set the seeds number to three, click play, and here we go. We get three tiles within the limits we have set. And if we restart, we get a new combination. Next, we need a function to be able to loop through the list of seeds and find which is the closest of them to a certain point. So let's go ahead and do that. Private in get closest point, which takes a vector 3. And so let's say in closest point index equals 0. And then let's set a variable called distance to the distance between the point and the first point from the seeds list. Then we're going to loop through each seed, check the distance, saving this in a variable called temp distance. If the distance is less than the previous shortest one, we set the shortest distance to the temp distance. And we also set the index to the current seed. And after it has looped through all the seeds, we can return the seed index, knowing that that's the closest seed to whatever point we have given the function. So now let's create the actual generate map function. We loop through all the rows and all the columns in a nested loop like this. And then for each, we will set a variable for the position, vector3 point equals new vector3, then row zero column. Now let's check if the position is free, meaning it's not the position of one of the seeds, because we don't want to overwrite this. And if it's free, let's check which seed is the closest. In closest point index equals find closest point, which is a function we just created. And we give it the current point. And all that's left now is to initialize the tile the same way we did when we were creating the random seeds. We give it the prefab and the point, then quaternion.identity for rotation, and then again we set the parent to the container. Now we can call this function from the start function and go test that. Click play, and there we go. Every time we click play, uh, a different map is generated and also if we play with the number of seeds we can get more areas. That's it basically done but I'm just gonna show you one more thing which is great for debugging but it's also kind of nice to be able to see the map being built. We're gonna use a coroutine to pause for a fraction of a second between initializing the tiles so we can see the map being built. Let's change the generate function type to i enumerator, and then in the loop we can say yield return new wait for seconds and set a number of seconds. I think 0.2 works best. And then in the star function, instead of calling the generate map function, we will say start coroutine. And if we play now, we can see the map being created. It's kind of fun to look at. And that's it. Thanks guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Consider subscribing. There's also a Discord server that you can come join. And I'll see you next time. Bye!